Warren Fishburne has aged really well. Yeah. Like, he's aged remarkably well. I mean, he's not like, you know, it was the cowboy from Pee Wee's Playhouse, like, <laughs> like, like trim anymore. Uh, but, but he's he's managed to be to look really, you know, his um, he has very dignified facial features, mm. like his his cheekbones and his jawline, and he's always he's got that pockmarked face, and so it's really like you know who he is right mm. away, because he just has a very distinct facial texture. I've always liked Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. I think he's like he's a fantastic actor. Yeah, he does have a. It would be hard to place his face, um, just like just looking at him. You, you know, if somebody was to say, "Oh, this person's from North Africa or West Africa," yeah. I think it'd be very difficult to place his face because no, you know, it, it doesn't have a lot of. Uh, common features in one. He just has a lot of like strong features. Yeah, because a lot of them are almost um, like Filipino, I would think. Or, well, because then you know Filipino people look like Asian black people in a lot of cases. Like, it's really weird. <laughs> it's really crazy. There's probably a bad joke about like Korean or uh, Filipino barbecue and and watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's a, what is it? Um, there's a there's a whole like tradition of uh, pig roasting in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Like that's their barbecue. They've got this sweet pig. It's actually really good. Mm-hmm. They they like fill it with um, uh, what should we call it? Big ass green onions, and then they like pour Coca Cola all over the. <laughs> it's inf- it's incredible. Huh. It comes out like candied. Roast pig, spit roasted pig. It's amazing. Candied bacon is amazing. I, that's the first time I ever had candied bacon was a vegetarian gave it to me because someone gave it to them. They're like, I can't eat this. Yeah. Like, I'll eat this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the, the thing about bacon that makes this candied bacon is is amazing because it provides its own oil mm. to melt the sugar in. Um, I like candying a ham, like pieces of ham, like slice up some some roast ham, um, and then I'll you know throw some butter in there and then just sprinkle brown sugar on it and some, some like cayenne pepper, and then wait for it to kind of melt a little bit and flip that thing over and do it again. Keep doing it. Keep reapplying the the, the sugar until I feel like it's like gooping on there, and then you know, periodically you remove it from the heat so that. It'll. It doesn't just completely liquefy, and um, at the end, just turn the heat up real good and flip it a few times and turn it off and pull it off and let it sit and then it's just sticky. It's gonna be so delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's like a. I use some of the uh, skull jar uh, hot sauce that I purchased recently to make candied hams, ham cutlet things, and. Um, now I'm hungry and I want to make some more of them. <laughs> so you do spicy candied stuff? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I think that, that that's like, uh, what's the word of those, uh, the tamarind cans- candies? Like, there's, it's like a Mexican candy. Hmm. It's a, they, they, they take, or maybe it's, I think it's a, I've only ever seen it in the international food aisle at Kroger. But there are these, like, suckers that are covered in tamarind and then cayenne pepper. So it's this, like, hot and sweet combination, yeah. and they're delicious. I think it's what, Mexican hot chocolate, I believe, that has hot... Oh, yeah, like yeah. Like, hot sauce or hot pepper in it. Yeah. It's a very interesting... I couldn't do a whole one, but... It's, no. It's an interesting flavor. It's, uh, I think... I think there are a few sweet flavor types of sweet that get, they get opened up by a, a hot flavor, and vice mm. versa. Like the sweet allows you to taste, um, like actually taste the pepper behind the heat. Mm-hmm. But I think that there's something like orange chicken for me that I really enjoy the sweet and spicy together. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting. Some some combinations are are good chemically. And on the palate, in the sense of reducing acidity or, yeah, you know, reducing bitterness or something like that. And I always find it interesting to see the different 
savory and sweet and bitter and spicy combinations that different cultures come up with because you know like whether it's korean or i really like the korean i palette. love korean food um, we need to go to that place on the 10th of the bypass sometime where they do the Korean barbecue. Yeah. Because that's like, that's just like the, one of the best kinds of experiences. Yeah, it really is. You can just like, you take that perfectly marinated meat and then you set it on that hot pan for as long as you want. Uh-huh. So you can you can turn it out as rare as you need it to be or you can really <laughs> just turn it into leather. Um, <laughs> but it's also like, it's also a really incredible way to ex- experience um just like you know, variation of barbecue. Mm-hmm. I love barbecue. I love just the concept of of taking a bunch of seasoning and and infusing that into some some meat. Actually, one of the things that that I have um, been trying to develop for the longest time is how to make a portobello taste more like a steak. Hmm. My dad has always made fun of me, or vegetarians, for saying, "Well, why would you want to make a?" vegetable it tastes like a piece of meat you don't see people taking steak and trying to make it look like broccoli <laughs> right? that's his joke but i've also had hong kong uh, vegan cuisine where i've had a tofu product that was prepared like raw salmon and tuna and mm. it was nearly indistinguishable yeah and i've had shark fin soup like the real stuff and shark fin soup prepared with a fung- uh, a, um, a mushroom instead of the shark fin. Hmm. And aside from being really, like, kind of agitated and, like, charged from the real shark fin and versus, like, not with the vegan version, they tasted identical. Hmm. Like, and they were fantastic. I just didn't get all, like, you know, extra virile. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> that's that's the that's, that's the point. Of that's the, the point is yeah. to increase virility. Like, yeah. I mean, which I don't. I've tried like shark, uh, smoked shark. I think it was jerky, but it wasn't like sharks. A weird tough meat. Yeah, it, it, that's kind of where I'm like. I don't know if the flavor is all that like good. You know, uh, it, it's not bad. But my my experience with shark is as a steak. It's bland. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what I've done with it is uh, you cut it real thin and you marinate it in whatever your marinade is. And you throw it on a really hot pan for like two seconds, flip it over, and mm-hmm. pull it off, and it's done. Maybe even only one second on each side, and then it's done. Yeah, it's not much fat. Right? Because, there's yeah, there's no fat. Those things are just raw muffle, muscle, yeah. and they're... Not not much to go wrong, and you... yeah, because I mean I've you know I've tried alligator and it's not something I don't think I would want to try imitation alligator. I think I could eat alligator if I was like <laughs> really hungry, but if I had a choice, I wouldn't choose. Alligator. Yeah, I only tried it once and didn't feel the need to try it ever again. <laughs> and it was you know it wasn't terrible, but it was like rubber. Uh, it was it felt like. I only would eat that if I was in a desperate situation. Yeah, if you needed to, there was like a good option. <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. 